afternoon, Good Metal, um, and you join us on a, a, a Spoken Metal Show special, we'll call it special, uh, that makes sense. The noise, if you can hear the, the, the thundering noise of an engine, uh, and uh, the air condition on full because it's hot as balls. Um, we are, uh, me and uh, Mr Cunningham, uh, brother Tim, are on a road trip to go and see Mr Vi. Um, uh, to, in Manchester and we thought it might be cool to uh, to kind of have a, a little bit of a show in the car because we're it, it's boring as hell anyway um, and talk a little bit about Vi um, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll have a, a we'll obviously go and see uh, Mr Vi and then on the way back we'll, we'll 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 do almost a little review me and Tim used to and still do a little bit of review and every now and again it's quite fun to do one in this context um, and just before we put this on we were talking about if uh, Steve Vai was metal in the events comments because this is the spoken metal show and is Steve Vai metal? But he's a guitar player. It's just uh, it's just uh, shredding guitar. That isn't metal, is it? Well, that's a load of fucking nonsense. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the truth of the matter is, is is Vai metal? Yes, of course, Steve Vai is metal. Um, before it was a fuck, it turned into a fucking comic. Kerrang! Give Passion and Warfare. This is the 25th anniversary of Passion and Warfare show that we're going to see. Um, they gave it 5Ks uh, when it meant something. Uh, you know, you look at the pictures of I in the 80s and the 90s, he's the epitome of a, of a metal guitar player. And as Tim quite rightly said, you know, people like Gus G, uh, I would say Zach uh, as well, Wild as well, and a whole, Mike, uh, uh, all, all the kind of famous. Uh, Musicians, guitar players out there will owe a debt to Vi. You let fucking come on. If, if anybody's playing the Digitech Whammy pedal, um, anybody's got fucking corn for fuck's sake, probably if, wouldn't if have anyone, had their fucking instruments. If anyone is using a Floyd Rose with a, uh, a cutout, yeah, scooped at the back, yeah, scoop yeah, at the back, you are influenced by Steve. Yeah, Vi. so, so th that, that's that. See, Vi is Mel, and well, I'll tell you what, no, it isn't that, that isn't that. You've got Kill the Guy with the Ball, um, you've got Bad Horsey, that's heavy as all shit those songs are, they are just heavy, you cut it however you want, the guy's played with Sepultura, he's played with Dave Lee Roth, and, uh, he replaced Malmsteen in, in Alcatraz, he's just, you know what I mean, the guy, the guy is metal, end of story, there'll be, I guarantee there will be metal t-shirts amongst the crowd, of which I imagine I'm will be a lot of blokes, um, and then now, so, with all that in mind, um, Passion and Warfare, um, probably it, it's in my top 10, in, it's probably even higher to be honest with you, of greatest records of all time. Um, the greatest instrumental it, it, it's, it's, guitar record. It, it's, it was a watershed moment for guitar players, um, it brought so many things in that you know that no one had even heard before or even thought of doing with guitars before um, and it's pretty much the zenith of what he, he, he did obviously he did other things after that but that was re the real sort of peak he says it himself that it was his greatest expression of like you know his sort of thing to god um, and for me it's just front to back it's just one of those albums that someone's made with a hell of a lot of love and a hell of a lot of like they knew exactly what they were doing he's just he finishes up with with with, with zapper um, and then he's like right i need to you know he's obviously learned a an amazing amount of stuff about recording from from zappa and he just poured that poured that all into uh, into that like and then the stuff he did with alcatraz and that and then just as he's doing passion of warfare he gets the call to go and play with white snake um, and he goes and, and absolutely kills on that like as what well an what an um, for me just passion of warfare just a just an incredible piece of work and it'll be just great to see it tonight uh, i'm a big fan i don't know how you feel about this tim i'm a big fan of albums being played in their entirety and uh, it's when well yeah when i went to the um, metallica playing master of puppets in its entirety there you go yeah i, I lost my shit I'm, yeah. go, I'm going to lose my shit tonight i, I like it because it's like yeah. it's like listening to an album at home in its entirety you you are there to listen to it and put forward and convey to you as uh, as the artist intended, this is how I would like to, to yeah. one song to see with into the next. Like yeah, it's as long as uh, the album's good enough to be played. In yeah, I do. It's, it's like how many how many albums can you do that with? Like you know, I don't think as Satriani done surfing in, in its in its full. It's got to be. He's got to have done that, hasn't he? he should, if, if not, he yeah. fucking should. Uh, do. I don't know if he hasn't. Um, um, it, it should be, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I know, uh, I know, I Maiden have done it with. Um, they did it with Seventh Son, was it? Oh no, it was Power Slave. I think they did it with. Obviously, Metallica have done it with the Black Album, the Puppets. Uh, lots of bands are kind of playing albums in full, and I'm a huge fan of this. 
some of the problems that it brings up though certainly with Vi is and we were talking about this before we, 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 t- we talked about going to the show was that uh, how do you do certain songs like you've got Alien Water Kiss Alien Water uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a love secret with like incredible amounts of layered guitars and he's got obviously Dave on the other guitar you know, so there's two guitar players but that, that's some there's an awful lot I mean I've seen his pedal board and I've seen the, his setup for these shows. Fucking hell. He's, he joked that he put a tweet out saying that he was joking about he's still getting the patches wrong when he's stepping on them. That must be fucking. <laughs> dude, imagine condensing Passion of Warfare into a, a solo stroke with another guitar player doing some parts performance. Fucking. It's a, it's a level of genius already, anyway. Yeah. His rig is a level of yeah. genius. Yeah. Ballerina, you know, Ballerina 1224. It's like fucking hell. I know it's done with just. Uh, Belarus. I know it's like, is that, I think it's an even tired. Uh, even tired. Uh, uh, even tied harmonizer 3000 or till whatever it is um, even tied, yeah. yeah i think it's one of them but even still that's going to be something to see now i've uh, i know pretty much I, it's not so much spoils but i know a couple of people uh, some of the crew and i know kind of how it's he's putting this performance across you're going to get several songs of uh, uh, classics uh, and then the passion of warfare in two two sections i believe and then some more classics apparently does a lot of encores now I won't do any spoilers yet, but after the, we, we come do the back and we come back from the, the, the show, uh, there will be spoilers and I'll give you more than enough heads up for, for any spoilers. Um, and if you can't get to the show, that's going to be great because you'll get to kind of feel what our, our anticipation for it and our excitement for it. Um, but I don't want to spoil it, but I've had two things kind of not spoil for me. I know they're coming, which if, they, if they're as good as I've heard, will be absolutely incredible. Um, and so, uh, so that, I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, I'm really looking forward to just, you know, um, whenever I go to see an artist, I, and certainly I know where it's, Tim feels the kind of same. I've seen how behind the veil, you know what I mean? I've seen behind the Wizard of Oz, like I've seen what goes on behind the scenes. And sometimes that ruins for, for a show for me. I've kind of seen how the magic happens. With Vi, it, it's always been there where when I watch it, he's still Steve Vai, you know what I mean? He's still, like, he's, he's still huge you to know, me, you he know? He reminds me of the mystery of Jack Skellington. <laughs> okay. He's like, he, he is almost like a magical being. He's like this, yeah. He's, he's like, like this weird, like, lip slender man. Yeah. Walking across the stage because he's bloody to, enormous. To, to me, he's, he's the closest, guy. he's the closest I'm going to get to, to, to Paganini. He, yeah. he has that, like you know, well, the devil's guitarist, well, if you will, let's like talk you about know. Crossroads. Then. Well, well, listen. The, the first time I saw Crossroads, uh, what was that? 80, is it 84, 85, something like that. And I, that was like the first time I'd seen guitar, someone playing guitar like that. And most of the time, the guitarist didn't look so cool. And he was playing. Uh, it's a Charvel, isn't it? It's not got a brand on it because he couldn't get the license. I think it's a Charvel. It's a Charvel, a, red a Charvel, vintage, a vintage yeah. one as well, like one of the first ones. And. And, I, and that, I, that just blew me away. And it wasn't so much like, it, later on, more stuff blew me away when I understood what he was doing. Like at the end, the fast stuff that he plays for Paganini's 24th Caprice. That stuff blew me away later on when I learned how to play the guitar properly and, and understood what, you know, That's what well picking time and technical. I ever saw a sweet picking. Yeah, uh, but the thing that got me was when he picked up the guitar by by the tr- tremolo arm or the whammy bar, if you will, and yeah. shook it by that. And yeah, I was just like, yeah. And then he made the guitar like um, scream, like that. It's that big scream. And then it was the intimidation lick, where he did the did, did off, did it, did, 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 did back and forth, and then he, t- he takes his coat off, and he just before he turns around, he goes, and he, and he ends on like a really awkward outside chord as well. And you just think to yourself, fucking hell! You, I just thought he's just evil and as cool as fuck, like. And I remember instantly then I was like, I have to get better. I was good as a guitar player, I thought I, I wasn't, but I thought it was good, I thought it was okay. But I used like I was I was ACDC, I was like chords and pentatonics and basic stuff. After I watched that I was like, what are pinch harmonics? What are dive bombs? What is sweet picking? What, what, what is, is the harmonic minor? Yeah, yeah, what is what what what, what is the Phrygian mode? What what is the what what, what is this this thing? He, he made me look into that. And I went back and then uh, I, about a month or so after that, I had uh, this wonderful opportunity where a friend of mine was selling one of his guitars. And uh, and I was like, right, I'm going to have to have a look at this guitar because it was the first pointy guitar I had the chance to play. And it was a Charvel. And it was from the same year. 
except it was black. Um, it was exactly the same. And I still have, now I've fixed it up and, and, I, and I've pimped it out so it's like exactly as it should be now. And it, it had everything. And so I was playing that and I was doing my best to play Eugene's trick bag like. Um, and he he gave me that like that's and I still that rev I still have the reverence for that. It's still impressive. I can play. I, I can play all of that, right? I can't play it all in one sitting. I was going to say, can you play it all in one sitting? Can't I can't play it in one sitting. I can play, yeah, I've, I've taught yeah. all of that, but can I play it all in one sitting? Not in one sitting, no, and not no. front to back flawlessly. I can. I, I reckon I can get two or three passes at most, I can get away with it. The certain things I can't maybe do as, as fast as he's doing, and it's probably not as, <laughs> the picking's not as clean. But I can have a fairly decent stab at it. So the non-guitar player w would be quite impressed by it. But the real guitar player would be, yeah, yeah that's okay, Coop, but you fucking clammed a couple of those notes, you know. Um, to me, that was still really impressive, like, you know, uh, that he did that. Um, Crossroads, what a fucking... If you haven't seen that film, the film itself is incredible uh, anyway, uh, you know. Um, Even though it's got Ralph Macchio in it. Yeah, it, it's like despite it. Um, yeah. But that's like uh, even some of the acoustic playing he does. It's like that. Uh, I think it's a Japanese girl at the very beginning does some stuff on the acoustic. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. incredible. But it's all about Vi. It's all about his, this thing there. Then fast forward a bit. So we're up to like 19, 1991, and I'm really starting to get into Vi. And obviously releases Passion of Warfare, and it starts to blow me away. But then he does stuff for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. He does all the like the, the crazy guitar stuff for that. <laughs> now. If I have to pick my top three pieces, uh, I'll tell you what, let's do a top three. Top three pieces of Vi playing. Doesn't necessarily have to be a song, but a section of a song. If I had to pick my top three, here's how my top three stand, yeah. First one is Eugene's Trick Bag, The Intimidation Lick. Um, if you don't know what that is, by the way, and you are a guitar player, uh, go onto YouTube, put in C-Vi's Intimidation Lick, and tell me it's not impressive and indeed intimidating. Fabulous stuff. Then you've got, um, for me, uh, I think it's the riddle, yeah, it's the riddle um, on Passion of Warfare, there's a bit where it's like, I think it's the, the, the female voice, which I think is Peter Vi, I think it's his, his missus, is she says like, no, let's make love, and it has all this like, backwards and reverse guitar, and it's building up, like, da -da 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 -da, and it breaks, and he plays this like, what can I only describe as the most perfect American in rock and roll, badass metal guitar thing there, and that for me is definitely one of his best playing. Head and shoulders above all that though, and if I wanted to say in like fucking 16 bars what Vi is, yeah, is, and I know exactly when it happens, it's in Bill and Ted's bogus journey, and they go, right, they, they get out the van, and they slam the door of the van, the van says Wild Stallion's on the back, yeah. and it's Vi with that wall lick, and it's like, and, it's, and that, that to me is just, transcendental perfect buy to the nth degree i don't think you could have wrote anything more by so that's my top three if you've got a top three just this playing maybe by, the song, by moments just moments um, okay um number one is because okay. it was my formative years and this molded me as a as a music fan is his gig with white snake at the monsters of rock oh shit. Rock. yeah okay his well just when when um when david coverdale introduces him is the is the uh, the dark wizard of guitar? Yeah. Um, seven strings, six strings ain't good enough for him. <laughs> it, it is it is yes. <laughs> David Coverdale. It, it's only David Coverdale. Um, and fight, he just comes on and he comes on with the audience who's listening. Cheeky yeah. bastard. And it's you know it, that's amazing. Yeah. And that that lick, the audience is listening. That sounds learned, like noise, Mister Vi. He learned how to do the uh, the chicken picking lick. He didn't know how to chicken pick. Right. And he said in an interview, I learned how to do it for that. And it's, it's bloody fantastic. Just shut up, you're amazing. It's fantastic. Oh, shut up, Vi. Shut up, <laughs> Stop it, Vi. Stop it now. Like, Stop yeah. embarrassing Shut up, we know you else. can play. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he embarrasses so many other guitarists yeah, yeah. without he never, ever be full of himself. You know, Jim, during the year uh, where Dave Lee Roth did Eastman and Smile, yeah. yeah. Uh, which, is a, which is just a fantastic record, by the way. Um, it is a bit with the uh, like big, you know. Obviously, Davy Roth loves his big band stuff. He loves his, uh, you know, harking back to the kind of like thirties and forties mm -hmm. and, and all that everything. Vice during the recording process, of, of it, they were like, "Oh, we need to get a big band in, or, or, or a group of horn players, a horn section, or something." 
and Vargo was like, oh, I'll, I'll do the music for it, and he wrote out the music and, and conducted this yeah. horn section. Do you know what I mean? That's not a, that sounded like a guitar player, that's a musician. I'm telling you now, he got that from Zappa, 100% that's oh, from yeah, Zappa. But he got, Drilled the, job, to fuck, he got like, the job with Zappa because he was so bloody good. Well, he, he, he transcribed, yeah. transcribed like the black page, didn't he, and sent it to Zappa. It was like, you know, and, and then and then Zappa's like, the, the famous story of like, you know, the audition for Zappa, which you can see on YouTube, I, I won't go through, it's fantastic. But then, you know, Working with Zappa must have been a fucking. That must have been tough. That every day your Zappa's gonna fucking. If he pulls you on as his little little Italian virtuoso, you, you better be damn yeah. sure you're good. You can like, see where Dweezil got him. Zappa got his hundred percent. His hundred percent. His, his, um, his, his shred ability yeah. from. So just number uh, number three, uh, Donington, uh, White Snake by solo section, which is about forty minutes long. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's, like it's ridiculously and long. it's all good. But it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And the rest of White Snake did join in with him as his band yeah it was very very cool yeah. i recorded it off the radio on, on wow. a cassette amazing um, those, those are days man um it, i've got a cheeky number two Lay it on. because it's when he played with with dave lee roth right and he was he was young and he was a bit um you know he was cheeky then he well, played it behind well, but... his back <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's, so, what's the story is this, what's the story i just as a sidebar this day, what's his name um it was Jason Becker and I think it was Marty. Marty uh, Hayman, yeah. Man. Didn't they used to play when they were going they were in like cacophony and stuff and Racer X and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were into that. Uh, and on during the show during like the when he was travelling up and down the country, didn't they play eruption where one guy played the the, the the left hand part and the other guy played the right hand part on the same guitar. I think so, yeah. That's it's fucking stupid, that is like, like that. Do, behind your head, that's that's sending a very clear message, that isn't it? It's like, yeah, I'm replacing you, because that's what it was. When he joined David Rock Band, he was essentially replacing Eddie Van Halen. He replaced possibly the most influential heavy rock and metal guitarist ever. Yeah. And that's Eddie Van Halen. Anyone yeah. wants to argue with me, I will argue. All day, yeah. all night, and long. he replaced and he replaced Ingrid Malmsteen for Christ's yeah, sake. Good. You know what well, I mean? I, I think Eugene's trick bag itself is a is a is a note to Malmsteen. Hey, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, too. that one, just, neoclassical just, stuff. Yeah, yeah, you're not the only one who can do that. Like, yeah. Um, it live, he is much much cleaner than than Malmsteen live. Well. I, I wouldn't uh, say yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say Malmsteen is like sloppy is the wrong word because he is fucking incredible. But it tends to be. It tends to be a, yeah, a bit lost. Seen, I find a lost. I've seen them both live. I've seen, yeah, Team Malmsteen. You hear um, a lot of pick noise with Malmsteen live. You, you I, don't I think there's, you know, I think Vi, Vi's, co co I think I was constantly improving, whereas I think Malmsteen reached a plateau at one point, and that's happy, it. He and he's great. He is at the pinnacle of, of that. Field, so, so, so that's the second one. What's the what's top top piece of Vi moments? The top top piece of Vi moments is when I went to see him yeah. at the Manchester Apollo. Right. And. He did uh, the Attitude song <laughs> with um, Eric Sardinus, who was a, yeah, yeah. A slide he had the slide guitar with, with that the bro guitar as well, yeah. Marshall. Yeah, um, and we did it with um, Zappa's old guitarist, uh, Mike Kinali. Uh, Mike Kinelli, who was, yeah. who was, by the way, Mike Kinali is an honest tour. But when he was with Vi, he was he was absolutely incredible. Doubling Vi's parts, playing piano, he sometimes in the same song. Vi plays just yeah. Incredible, and now they've got like Dave where uh, Wiener Weiner. I don't want to say Wiener because that sounds terrible, but I'm sure it's Wiener, and um, who's, who's absolutely incredible, by the way, in, in his own right. He was a kid um, then, and because yeah. he played on this as well, yeah, he was incredible, a kid. incredible he was player. A kid. And so, you got you've got four incredibly talented guitarists playing the Attitude song, yeah. And it's like, ding, 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 ding. and that song that's is just a, a shred fest, anyway, incredibly heavy, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it just I, it, it's almost like you know, when a um. The hairdryer treatment. It yeah. was like I was in front of an industrial fan yeah. full of well, metal guitar. That, that, that's what's that's what tonight is going to be. It's going to be vibe to the nth degree. You're getting Passion and Warfare. I don't know how long Passion and Warfare is. It's like it's got to be about 50, 60 minutes long. Uh, 60. Uh, 60 something long. 62. 60, that's about right. Like that. And and you're getting that, yeah. And I'm sure, like you know, there's the bits in between that, and then either side of that, you're getting stuff as well, you're like about this, an, another an hour and a you're half. Gonna, you, you, you're getting, well, yeah, so you're long. getting all of the vi, um, and that's I, I, that's the one thing I think. You know, he's he's an interesting artist if you think about it, because he's playing niche guitar music. That, that's what it is. But I think he's managed to live through. He, I mean, he came out with, with with vinyl with no CDs. And then he's, 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 you know, he's done it favoured nations. He's looked after his own thing. He's been an extremely savvy businessman to stay, you know. Do you know what? I being want, able to do this, I, like? I, I, want, I want another moment in in Vi history. Yeah. 
Can Maybe. You, I, I, he didn't invent the seven string guitar. No, of course, there no, have dude. been seven string guitars. Christ, that Jasper, point. Jasper, 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 he brought the seven string guitar into metal. Almost certainly. No yeah. one else had done. Yeah. Yeah. George Lynch had one, but he was a higher string. Yeah. Um, right. The fact is that Vi introduced that low B into metal and it changed metal forever. Corn. But when they first started out, it, corn were buying up as many gems that? as they could get because there wasn't that many around then because they weren't popular. No, no, uh, no, seven no. string guitars and gems, they weren't popular. People saw them as lurid relics of the of the 80s of, of of hair metal because they were like what this guitar's dipped and looks like with rainbows and stuff on it you know what my mate mike looks... had one of them limited edition one yeah. with the maple fretboard and genuinely that that was that was just one of the most wonderful guitars ever they're, they're just great well i i own i own i own one of those guitars like the you know, a, a vi guitar you know a signature guitar Bastard. and and it's just you know for me, it, it that that wouldn't have existed. It wasn't for him. It just it just wouldn't exist. But look at what else he did. Like so, he did that. Um, but then look at the like, for example, uh, amps. Look at effects. Look what he did with that as well. He, you know, he he put his own stamp on it. Now there's not artists there who have their own signature this and signature that. But I was signaturizing everything way before it was even cool. You know what I mean? I, sure, Eddie did a, does a lot of stuff with that, and he does some great stuff with it. But you know, Vi was doing. He's, he's got his own gear, and, you know, and, and it's proper thinking outside the box gear as well. You know, I'm sure Eddie's got his ho own line and stuff. But Vi was doing that as well. Like, I mean, the stuff he was doing to guitars, you know, fundamentally changing them. The, the things he did with Evolution, DiMaggio pickups and stuff. Things he was doing with Floyd Roses and scooping he out knew, and stuff like he that. He knew like, how he wanted his pickups wound. Yeah, yeah. You know, the guy, the guy is a visionary. Yeah, that's what, that's the word. Visionary. For he's a, yeah. He's a visionary. Well. The, the word genius always gets ba gets banded around. That's always gets banded around with anybody who's good at something. And very rarely does that actually mean that that person is a genius. Normally it just means they're really good and it's great. A genius, I think, is someone who hears something with inside their, their head, their soul, whatever it is inside their inner, inner voice that's speaking, and then can, they can change that into whatever he wants, yeah, playing if you will. Um, we're just did, obviously we're driving, so it's like fucking crazy time traffic trying to get into into here. Yeah. Um, it's being able to translate that and bring that out in in, in the same moments, not having that to think about it. Being able to translate that idea and produce that. Now I'm pretty sure that Vi can do that now, and and the stuff that he produces, that's the same as like Hendrix, you know, or Zappa, you know, could do that at a whim. I'm sure, right? If all the uh, the the rest of the band somehow, I don't know. Got locked stuck in a lift tonight. Yeah, the Vi could do a whole show of just him playing on the guitar with no backing band, and he'd do it with a smile as well. Yeah, and I'm sure you could go. By the way, this whole show, yeah, you can do. You can play nothing that you played before. I reckon he'd have a pretty good do that. I reckon he could improvise. Right, so you're going to have to improvise every single piece of this. Or I think he could do that, and that's that's what a real genius is. What a real what. I want to get I've gone the wrong way now. Oh, what a surprise! It's it's it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Um, it's all good. Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna go down there. I reckon that's that's kind of clear now. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've kind of cheated a little bit. Yeah, it's there, okay. It's all good. It doesn't matter as long as we get there. It's all good. Um, so yeah, I don't think there's a support tonight. I think he's just playing, which in itself is fucking madness. Which in itself is extraordinary to me. You know, if there isn't a support, he's playing for like probably two hours. I know there's meant to be some form of intermission. But that's and fucking I, I know, frightening, I, I know that, like. I knew he practices for hours a day, but yeah. stage playing is a whole this, different thing. Uh, His, he, he must have steel for hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what the thing is, right, uh, one of the things that obviously people always talk about is his 30 hour practice reg regime and talks about, like, you know, how he used to practice for days. He didn't practice necessarily to want to get good. Obviously, that was, the, you know, a nice byproduct that he would get good off something. He practiced because he loved the instrument. He, like, he, je he fell in love with the instruments when he was I at MIT. With it, he, do you yeah. know what I mean? So. And, and I've met a lot of people out there who are going to go, fucking hell, this is a fucking Vi loving. Yeah, it is. Yes, it um, is if yeah. you were listening to this podcast and at the beginning of the thing of, of us talking about going to see Steve Vi, I didn't think it was going to be a Steve Vi loving. You should have turned off fucking a long time ago. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? Oh, they're talking about Vi and they really like him. Yeah, they fucking do. You know what I mean? It's like, 
Um, and I, I tell you what, one of the disappointing things is to all the sad things I sometimes see at these shows when it's a particular when a guitar player, and you'll have all seen this, folks, is the lad there with the whatever by Satriani, whatever it may be, watching the band, and the girlfriend next to them, who's like been dragged along, and you feel so fucking sorry for her. She, to, to most people, I would say to 80% of the entire fucking world, maybe more, it's going to sound like Morse code. I'll know when he's like, when it's like, hold on, that, that's not exactly the runny place. You know what I mean? Or, oh, hold on, doesn't he, doesn't he mute that section? I'll notice those things. To most people, it'll be a cavalcade of Morse code fucking beeps. Do you know what I mean? It yeah, just will like, be. Like my, my, my then girlfriend and my now wife used to take the piss out of me at, at, at gigs because I turn around to the, the drummer in my band then, Rich, and go, how oh, tight is that? The fantastic, did this the syncopation <laughs> then? And they'd just be taking their piss out of us. Well, this is right. Look, you know. me, me and Tim, we, we, we work tirelessly. Yeah, we, are, we go to shows quite a lot. And, and if we're not a show, we're probably working it. And very rarely do we get to go to see a show together. And um, one of the strongest reasons that we're going to see this show together is because there's no way my, my wife would have sat she knows why she knows he's good she enjoys some of the more amusing stuff that he does but generally speaking she doesn't want doesn't care about you know this everything and i'm sure it's the same for your wife and i'm sure it's the same for like some other you know 100%. i know yeah, i know, you know two girls who'd be happy to go to this yeah like, and i'm not and I'm, that's not me saying uh, being sexist there it's me saying there's, there's guys out there who'd be like you what you're gonna sit and listen to vi for two hours fucking hell isn't it just one long solo yeah yeah it fucking is and it's a great one as well, you know, it's so... A, it's a damn best solo you've ever fucking heard. So, you know, I, I can understand when people say fucking hell, it's just, it's just noise, it's just noise. Yeah. But you can say that about anything, you can say that about thrash. It's not, it's not all know. just a, a million notes a second, though. Yeah, it's... it's very it's, tasteful at times. Yeah, it's well, it, 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 often one of the quotes that you, I've heard of that is, it's, it's, it's quite something to play, get a crowd on your side and play fast and heavy and all that type of stuff, that you, all the tricks that you use to, to turn an audience on. But it's an entirely other thing to bring the entire audience, especially an arena yeah to down to one note to one note to pull everybody in so it's like he'll play i imagine he'll probably might play uh whispering uh, uh, a prayer uh, he may play some of those songs he's certainly play tender well. sweet but probably play that and some of the more balladic ball, ball, balladic ball, 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 Balladic. 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 I think we've just made up a word. That's it. That's it. And I think th copyright, it, copyright. He, he will he will play those and he'll be able to take them people down to one or two notes. Now that's the other skill there. Like that's a real oh, for skill. The love of God, there is. I mean, he, he yeah. plays ridiculously fast lines yeah, yeah. in that. But also there's 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 a, there's, there's a single note section when he plays one note and he feels one note out of that. So that, that yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a very good example. He clearly will play for the love of God because it's in yeah. passion. But he's often said that uh, he his thing is that he can uh, is is the record the company and the thing that look at, uh, are happy with him because he still pulls in those nickels and dimes as he says he still you know he still can tour he can still tour but it must be incredibly difficult like you know, he's he's I, uh, he's not even famous I don't think I think he did stuff with Dave Lee Roth which probably pushed him through the stratosphere a little bit but even still I think he'd probably be walking around Manchester today and and a handful of people would would recognise him and that must be incredible because you got all the that must be a fantastic sort of situation to be in when you think about it like you know to, to have a, 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 a group of absolutely sort of die hard fans and then be able to walk down the street what a fucking nice mix he's got like you know um yeah so this did this show really really looking forward to the last time i saw him was uh g3 i think it might have been the last one time i saw him Oh man, uh, I, I saw him about 14 years ago. <laughs> Jesus! Did he have long hair when you saw him? He had long hair. Shit! He had long hair. That was the Eric Sardinas gig. That was the oh, right. I saw him. Oh, so, no, I saw yeah. it. Yeah, I saw him after that. Like, yeah, it's so, Wow, fucking hell, that's a trip. Um, yeah. He's only, as well, I read the, the quote for the tour where he was like, I'm only just at the level where I, can, I think I can play this album and do it justice. And you're like, fuck off. 25 years it's took you to get, for you to get to that level. It kind of just shows his, his, his level of perfection. Though. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's something to be... Uh, yeah, least. yeah, he's constantly improving his, his, yeah. his, himself. Like, that, yeah. that's fucking brilliant. That's a brilliant thing. That's a brilliant thing. Okay, so at some point we're I'll very, knock this off because we've got a, we're, we're very close to the venue. So very um, ridiculously close to the venue. And it, it, this has just been an interesting little experiment that we've done. There it is. Here's I, can, Ritz. I can see his couch. There you go. Um, so we're going to pull up now. We're going to watch a show, obviously, uh, and then afterwards we'll come off and we'll be like, uh, 
and, and, and I'll give you a little review as well. Um, so once again, uh, the flag goes up for spoilers. Be aware, spoilers will be coming. We'll be talking about some songs he played, some surprises, as I know there are surprises here. Um, so we're going to see what, what happens. Like, so this was cool. Uh, load and only, or oh, what a load of Son shit. Of a bitch. No, Son of a bitch. Back. I tell you what, everyone what? going into that concert then looked like metalheads. Well. Yeah, oh my God. If um, so you said, oh, Sepultura playing tonight, you'd be like, okay. Yeah. Or you'd be like, oh, I know Fear Factory on tonight. You'd be like, okay. All of those things would be would be deemed acceptable, like, and and that, that and that's fine. That's how you, I, I'm sure Vi would want it that way as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out how to stop this. Uh, I just press the record button again. I figure. Wow. Say whenever you go to whenever you go to shows, you always you always see these people that go, oh best show ever, it's the best show I've ever been to. That really does have to rate as one of the the better shows I've ever seen, um, on on a number of levels. Um, it was just so well put together. You know, obviously it's it's Stevie Vai who's done it. He, he's obviously he knows what people wanted to see, and he knows what people wanted to hear. More importantly, I should say. And, and he's just produced that, like you know, front to back. Yeah. It was it was exactly for his audience, exactly what it should be. And so, before we go into it, there will be spoilers of some of the nice surprises that he kind of puts up there. So, if you are listening, your plans going to see Steve later on uh, at some of the other shows. Just stop listening now. I'm giving you fair warning. If you haven't, then we'll talk about it and, and how great it was. Uh, but I'm giving you for, fair warning now. There will be spoilers. There it is. You can't say you haven't been warned. Okay, so we're just heading out now. And um, I don't know what, what was your thoughts on that, Denton? <clears throat> well, uh, th th there's, th there's a word. There's one word that actually does come to mind, and that is perfection. Yeah, it was pretty pretty close, wasn't it? Pretty close. Um, I don't. I couldn't fault. I couldn't fault anything. And I'm. I, I, people may know. Um, people know me now. I'm. I'm quite a fierce critic. Um, of everything I watch, listen to, whatever. Sure. <clears throat> no matter whether I'm loyal to the the artist or not, I will go. Well, I don't really like that. Or uh, you know, it's not really that for me. Or I don't think that was really good. Yeah. Well, that sound was awful or something. You know what? The sound was fantastic. The Ritz. The, the sound is generally better in the Ritz than other places. What a great venue! Like just perfect yeah. for it. One is. I do genuinely yeah. there probably wasn't a place in there that had a bad view. I don't think it. I don't think that was possible. And uh, everybody had a great view. Like. Um, I think for me, uh, you knew you were off to a winner at the beginning. When he opened with the, the sort of the crossroads thing with the guy at the crossroads, uh, I can't, and then I can't believe he, we, we were talking about it before. I was like, "You cheeky bastard!" And then and then you get you get bad horsey, and you're just like, "Of but of course, but of course." And it was yeah, the, I think <laughs> the thing that really got me going was that was like four songs at the beginning, and he ends with like whispering a, a prayer to add the four songs, and I turned to you and I was like. We've just started. That was him going right. Okay, this is the opening, and we've just had this before he even goes into Passion and Warfare. And you're like, he's already pulled out everything that you could imagine, and and then we're starting Passion and Warfare. And um, so he did this very cool thing where he has a screen on the back, and um, the last time he played Liberty, according to, to Steve, was the when he was at the uh, Seville Guitar Expo. When he played uh, Greasy Kid stuff, I think he did Liberty Greasy Kid stuff for the love of God, and uh, and so on the back screen was it was him playing it with Bri well, Brian May introducing him first and foremost, and him launching into that with Brian May launching into Liberty, which was just a really well orchestrated piece of you know nodding to like that he hasn't played it for, since then, and that it was like a really unique piece of work, and I thought that was just like that set the tone for me, that was just like you know. This is going to be for the fans. This 100 percent is going to be for the fans, um, and then obviously you, you you get to do passion and warfare, and you just think to yourself, 
it's, it's such a mountain that that's such a mountain to tackle you know I mean when he went into the animal we both marked out something shocking but it was so close to the record I was staggered by how close it was you know what I mean everything was there and you just think to yourself this is a record that's 25 years old he doesn't play that the animal a lot he plays it a bit like, but he doesn't play it a lot but it was so close to the record I was, I was blown away by that is I thought, it the riddle that he um, he's never played live before I think it was yeah I think the it riddle, was he said I've never played that live before yeah said, well a lot of the songs that, he was he said that, that was a lot of fun yeah a lot of the songs <laughs> he was saying like this, that, that song's been waiting a long time to be played like you know and you, yeah, you get the feeling it well, probably was he never toured this album he never toured yeah, Passion he, and Warfare he never toured Passion and Warfare was one of the first things he said and, and it, it just seems amazing when you think about that that he didn't that he's never done that and then you get the uh, the thing with Satriani. So on the back screen, uh, Satriani comes on, and the pair of them trade off licks to I believe it was two uh, answers. They were they were playing yeah. against each other, and that was just brilliant because there's a lot a lot been, there's a lot been said about Steve Vai's relationship with Joe Satriani. Why have they done an album together? Did he really get on? Blah blah blah. And all that proved to me was that it's just nonsense. That of course they get on. Of course they're friends. And it was just nice to hear Joe Satriani <laughs> saying. Here's to 25 years of passion and warfare, you know, and, and bowing down to him. And I just thought to myself, that's a really nice touch. He didn't have to say that, he just played and, and that was it. And I just thought that was really, really cool. And um, later on, he has uh, John Petrucci from Dream Theatre comes up and, and does, and that was just fucking stupid. That was just stupid how, how fucking good. John Petrucci is and how close he sounds to like Vi uh, when he wants fair, to though, to be fair when Petrucci did uh, a, a big big ass sweep pattern his incredibly Near fast, the end. fast run and then Vi goes well yeah I, I can't do that and yeah. I'm gonna I'm just gonna let this go and he was doing it with one hand yeah. he, he wasn't playing with his right hand at all <laughs> He was just doing it with his left hand. And, and the, I, I yeah, kind of yeah. knew that day, like I said just before on the pod, that uh, I knew that there were so surprises were coming. I knew there'd be something with John Petrucci, I knew there'd be something with Joe Satriani. What I didn't expect was near the end when uh, he played Stevie Spanking and had Zappa, uh, and he was playing with Zappa. That was a real moment for me, that, because that's him just paying lip service and a nod to everything that's got him to where he is now, like, you know. Um, just utterly superb, like you know, it's um, his command of the instrument is, is is evergreen. It's 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 he, you know, he's just so comfortable with it, and and he knows how to work a crowd, which he's obviously learned from Dave Lee Roth. He's picked that up from playing arenas, and then he's learned to the, the musicianship side of it, how to work his band. That he's learned from Zappa, and you can just see all the threads coming together of what he's done. And you know what I mean, and it's just it's nice that he can do this, that he can hand off yeah. passion and warfare. Worth, worth noting like that. That, that he is a he is a guitarist who has played the biggest arenas in the world. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, he, has, he has played to some. So crowds you, you, you saw them work in the crowd really well, which is just you know. And let's 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 be honest here as well. Let's get some props to the people who deserve it. You know, uh, Dave Weiner on the other guitar. Wow, what a job he's do, he's done. What a job. You know what I mean? Doubling vice parts. As well as like you know, when they when they were doing, um, they were like sort of having the sort of banter back and forth, and they were talking about what 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 song was it? They were playing it low, and then they played it a whole octave lower again. Was it Bad Horsey again? And they were like, oh, yeah. yeah, and they played like two or three octaves lower again, and you were just like, this is just you know what a what a perfect foil for what he's doing, like you know. Um, yeah, that's when he told us that. Um... A girl had told her his dark, had told Steve Vai her darkest secret that she wanted to um, wanted him to play Bad Horsey while she sat on his amplifier. Yeah, fuck, I'd sat on his amplifier for that. <laughs> I think that, we both, we both that, said that. That version, that version of Bad Horsey as well. Fucking hell, that's that's someone attacking if, that. If, like, if anyone ever says that no, he's not metal, tell you what, that version of Bad Horsey that he opened with was heavier than a big bag full of depleted uranium. Yeah, yeah. More metal, <laughs> more metal than your Mars kettle, as my friend Don would say. Like, yeah. uh, but yeah. you just, you know, there's no support. He comes on, he plays four or four songs, and then he plays Passion Warfare. He plays Passion Warfare in his entirety, and then does several more with a little encore as well. You just, you know, you, you, there's not, you couldn't have asked for more. I was, I was, it was nice when he did the um, Crying Machine from Fire Garden as well. He was just wailing. The guy was just wailing. He was just, just fucking running with the ball. And just what a what a superb performance that was, like you know, and you know, 
Uh, it was nice as well afterwards to, to see um, Thomas Norek, the his guitar tech. Like, what a what a fucking sterling job that man has to do. Virtually a guitar change every song. Virtually multiple guitars of varying sorts of degrees of stuff. Like you get the lit up one for Bad Horsey. You're getting um, all the different sort of uh, guitars and different tunes that he must have used for those as well. Like, what a fucking great job he's done. Take my hat off to him. Like you know, uh, unbelievable work. And it's just nice that he gets to. This feels like a coda to his to his career. He can now do this, release modern primitive with the with the anniversary of the Passion of Warfare, and then literally start basically the next phase of his musical career, whatever that may be, whether it's you know going down the same route or or, or, or other avenues. It felt like a perfect coda to that, a perfect sort of nice bookend to say. He felt like he was getting something off his chest. If, if I'm honest with you. Well, I think it's probably. It, it, has probably weighed on him that he he didn't he didn't tour with his because he was touring with with White Snake. Is, is it a platinum album? Surely platinum album. And it's never been toured. Never been toured. Think about that. Like what the shit, you know? And it, yeah, he's probably asked. He's probably like you know when he played Sisters, he was like, you know what? That's been dying to be played live. And yeah. that's ridiculous because that is actually a beautiful. It's a beautiful song. And it's not very long, so why couldn't it have been shoe on another? And when he did the uh, Alien uh, Water Kiss, um, mental. A ballerina as well. I was wondering how we do that, and it just put it just like it wasn't anything. He just it away it went, and you're like you're just amazing, amazing stuff there, you know. Yeah, he pulled off ballerina quite disturbingly well. Yeah, just there's no like it wasn't even a thing. Like the only reason it wasn't in the set is because he's had other stuff to play. Yeah, the only reason you know it was live is because it was that was it was slightly different in parts. Yeah, you I could think tell that he was. I don't think he changed it necessarily because he couldn't play it. I think he just changed it because he thought. I think he was enjoying it. Yeah, I thought this sounds actually a little bit better. I'm going to go with this. He certainly did it with uh, with some of the songs. He went off a little bit on the solos, a little bit. Just obviously because it's 25 years ago, he's going to have found a better way to, to get where he wants to go, you know. But I mean, if that wasn't the definitive performance of for the love of God as well, I don't know what is. Do you know what I mean? If that was someone playing to, to, that that to death, like that that he, he's got that song. Down. There's nothing else he needs to do with that. It's perfect. Uh, Blue powder was amazing. Blue powder was pretty damn impressive. Like, amazing. pretty damn impressive. What a like, bass player! Do you know what? For me, one of the one of the highlights. Audience is listening. Wow. Yeah, that, that was. Wow. You seen him just attack the fuck out of that. That was really impressive to me. That like, and I want to see how he would do it. Like, because there's quite a lot going on in that song. Like, and it, to have the video playing in the background. As well, and to try and kind of make sure that it stays in sync with that, that was yeah. quite a feat. Do you know what? I, I, I can't, I can't pull any negatives out of that. No, at all. No, no, not at all, not at all. Even, yeah, there's, there's obviously there's people who would say, well, he didn't play the attitude song, and he didn't play this, he didn't play that. But you know what? There's only so much time in the day. Like for Christ's sake, you know. I mean, we got what. Two hours, two and a half hours to buy there. That's, that, was, that was two and a half hours. That's fucking ridiculous. How old's he? What, 50 something? He's gotta be 54, 55. Gotta be, and he like two and a half hours get fucked. Like, you know what I mean? That's Springsteen territory right there, like, you know. Um, and, he's, and, he, and it's not like he went off and there was a drum solo, or he went off and there was a bass solo, or Dave Wiener played a section. It was him all the time. I don't think he ever left the stage. I think it was a couple of costume changes, uh, not really that many. Um, multiple guitar changes, but he never went off stage. It was it was him no, all no, the he time. Didn't, he didn't go off stage. At That's all. a fucking staggering amount of concentration required to do that type of shit. Staggering. Super, absolutely. I'm super. quite speechless. Yeah, good. Well, not and good because we're, we're doing a podcast. No, no, that's true. Speech, yeah, but no, it, death, genuinely, but... you know, we we had a brilliant perch right near the bar on the left hand side. Yes. If anyone goes to the Ritz. Yes. In Manchester. Yes. Stand near the bar on the left hand side. Fantastic pitch, like yeah. Wonderful pitch. Mm. And you can get served whenever you want because the bar oh. it's, it's not busy when people are when they're playing. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, you know just a, a, a really good way of of 25th anniversary of a classic album. That's that's how you do that. That's how you do that. Yeah. Well done, Mr. Boy. Yeah. Well done. And so we'll we'll put this podcast up. This will be it's just a bespoken metal show special. And I will tag Mr. Vi in. And I hope in some degree he does listen to this and, and does take it on because, you know, just thanks very much because it's been 25 years waiting to meet, to actually even meet you and say, you know, thanks for, thanks for doing that. Uh, 25 years to hearing some of these songs played live at all. Um, 
you know what I mean? And so thanks for, for doing that, like, because it means like, a hell of a lot to someone like me, you know, to, to grew up listening to you, to, to, to have you do this type of thing, is it means a great deal, so thank you very much, like, and when we, we, we spoke after the show, like, you know, I, I genuinely made, meant it, it's, it's 25 years in the making, boss, I ain't, you know what I mean, it's been a long time coming, and, and totally worth it, totally worth it, and... Um, yeah, and I, I couldn't add any more to that. And normally, I, I'm not short of a word or two. Like, no, you're not. No, that's but, true. But so what we get to do? We get to do your sign off now. You get to do your sign off. You remember it? <laughs> um, I, I, I do remember. Good, because we're gonna do it. Cause um, it's become a thing. So it only leaves me, uh, Coop, to say thank you very much for listening to this special, uh, the Steve Vai special on the road um, for the Spoken Metal Show. Uh, and it only leaves me to say to for for brother Tim uh, is simply. There will be no encore.